Cape's Caribbean Online Learning, where we help you prepare for CXT exams in biology. In this episode, we continue our review of the 2011 paper in Human and Social Biology. Okay, let's begin. In episode 1, we reviewed question 1, part A, and we got up to part 4, where we identified several methods of preventing the spread of dengue. And I also introduced an acronym, CAD, standing for Kill, Avoid, or Disrupt, to help you remember the various strategies you can use to control insect vectors. In this episode, we will be looking at question 1 part B, which is essentially a data presentation and analysis question. In this episode, we will be looking at the data presentation aspect of it, and in a following episode, we will be looking at the analysis of the data. So let's just do a review of this question so we understand what it is asking us for. Now, for those of you that already started reading the question, congratulations. I'll just do a quick synopsis. We essentially have two forms of data presentation, two sets of data that are being presented in different ways. One set of data tracks tourist arrivals for two countries, country X and country Y, over 12 months from December to November. This data is presented in the form of a line graph. The second set of data tracks the number of persons affected by the flu each month, basically tracking a flu outbreak over the same 12 months from December to November for the same two countries, country X and country Y. Now when we look at the question that follows, it is telling us that the data for country Y has already been plotted on a grid on another page. And what it is now asking us to do is to plot the data for country X on the same grid that has been provided. So of course already you're now assuming that you're going to end up with a graph that looks something like this where you have two lines on the same grid. As well you will then also assume that the scale will be the same for the Y and X axis. Y vertical, X horizontal. So what I did is I took the grid that they are mentioning here and I also took the table that we'll be using for our data and I put it on one screen so that I can walk you through the process of plotting a graph, especially in an exam situation. So let's go over to that screen. So here we are. On the screen, you can see that the graph that was mentioned in the question is on our left hand side and the table that we'll be using to plot another curve on that grid is placed on the right hand side. So I basically cut and paste both of these items onto this screen. Now when you are plotting a graph, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you're plotting the right thing. Okay, so this is country Y. Alright, it uses a circle and a dashed line according to the key. So this curve is, so this curve represents country Y. Country X will be represented by asterisks for each point that you are plotting and an unbroken line connecting each plot point. Okay, so let's make sure we have the coordinates organized 
in our table so since country y is already plotted we can you know put a little line through that now if you're in an exam situation just take a pencil and draw it through so that you won't make the mistake of plotting the wrong thing the next thing you want to check are your axes and the scale for each axis now the horizontal axis the x-axis is straightforward each line here represents a month okay it's a straightforward setup however for the y-axis which represents persons affected by the flu virus in hundreds we have to take note of how this scale is set when they say in hundreds right they said in hundreds it means that each of these numbers represents that number multiplied by a hundred so one would be 100 three would be 300 and so on so when we're plotting we have to take note of that difference because here the numbers are set in hundreds but here the numbers are set as is so it means we have to convert these numbers to a form that will fit this graph so if we want to get this form we now have to divide each of these numbers by 100 now again and because we are dividing a nice shortcut to use is remember that 100 has two zeros one two so if we're dividing a number by a hundred all we have to do is move the decimal point back two places so let's try that with the value for December 300 we move the decimal point one two and that will give us a value of three point zero so here we we'll write three We'll try it again for 600 600 we're dividing by a hundred so we move it backwards one two points so that will give us 6.0 which we could just shorten to six here and we'll just continue with the rest in the same way now we'll notice that these two numbers 50 what do we do with them well we do the same thing move the point two points backwards and just now it won't be a whole number now it will be a decimal 0 0.5 so we write 0 0.5 here same thing for this one 0 0.5 and we continue 400 100 and again 0 0.5 nice so now we have our data it's been converted to a form that will fit this graph so now we're going to plot the graph so the value we are using for December to plot on the graph is not 300 it's 3 so that it will fit the scale of this graph so December is 1 2 3 so we're 3 the line for 3 and the line for December meet that is where we put our first plot point note where note the form i'm taking it's an asterisk so i'm using an asterisk here january is 600 which is six on the graph so one two three four five six and there we go February is 1200, which on the graph will be equivalent to 12. So we keep going up, 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 up to 12. And we plot our point. The next is March. March is 900, which will be 9 on the graph. There we go. And I'll just continue up to June. So March is 9, April is 6, five. May 300, back down, and 
June is 100, which is 1 on the graph. Now, what do we do for 0 0.5, which lies between 0 and 1? Now, the dark line represents a unit of 1. So if we extend that a little bit, there are four smaller lines within this space. So it means that from zero, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five to get to one. So five lines is equal to one unit. Right? One unit, five lines. To get to to get the value for one line, you divide five by itself. And if you divide this side by five, you do the same thing on the other side of the equation. So that's also one divided by five units. And that means five divided by itself is one. So that means one line has a value of 0 0.20 units. So every time you go up one of these smaller lines, you're adding 0 0.20 to it. So this is 0. This is 0, .0 plus 0 0.2, so that's 0 0.2. Plus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.4. Plus 0 0.2 is 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2, 0 0.8, no it's not a perfect, and 0 0.8 plus 2 is 1.0, okay? So that's how you know the values of these smaller lines. Now how do you determine where to put 0.5? Well, 0.5 will be between 0.4 and 0.6. So 2, 4, 6, it will be between the one, two, between the second and the third line. So for July, we're looking for this one, two, three, you put it between the two lines. Okay? And you'll notice that all oh, and we are we we get a little confirm we got a little confirmation here. Because August in country Y also shows a value of 50 which is equivalent to 0.5 on the graph and it lines up exactly with where we found our point so we know we're on track all right so august for country x is also 0 0.5 and then we'll just continue for the rest of this graph And now all our points are plotted. The next step would be to join these lines or connect, essentially connect the dots. In this case, we already have the example of the graph for country Y. So we know that we're not expected to draw this perfect curve. Okay, so now we're going to connect these dots. Now I'm going to draw do a freehand drawing here but um, in an exam situation or otherwise you can use a ruler to connect these dots okay so we just want to connect and note I'm using the unbroken line and already I am off by far let me try that again let me try to get rid of that oh it did it okay great So, right, so let's see if we can connect these dots here. Let me see if my drawing skills are up to par. Alright, it won't be perfect, but it'll do. Okay. Alright, um, I, think, I think I still got it. Oh, yeah. 
all right so we have a nice lot here then back up again then down again and we are done all right so this is my really drafty version but um now you have two curves now in this video i use different colors but of course in a in a in an exam situation and generally the rule is pencil pencil only okay so i can put a little you know rainbow colors around it just so that you can remember that pencil only okay i used another color because you know it's a graph and it's video and you want to see what's happening but when you are doing it yourself you should be using pencil so that's the graph and in the following video we will go back to question 1b and analyze the data that we have presented.